Today we are having a showdown between these two RGB panels. For all of my indie filmmakers out there, let's, let's get, get ready, ready to rumble! rumble! This bad boy right here is the new Godox LD150R. It is 29 and a half inches wide, 17 inches tall, 4 inches thick, and weighs in at just under 14 pounds. And in this corner is the Nanlite Mix Panel 150. It's a tad slimmer, coming in at 19 inches wide, 16 inches tall, 3 inches thick, and weighing in at only 9 pounds. Now, I already did a full review of this Nanlite panel about seven months ago. I'll leave a link down in the description below in case you slept on that one. Now, at the time of this recording, the Nanlite can be picked up for 1300 US dollars, while the Godox can be had for just shy of 1000 bucks. Now, I have also worked with the Ari Sky Panel S60s, as well as the Aperture Nova 300C. And in my opinion, both of these panels are solid competitors. <laughs> as well, both of them actually outperform the Nova 300. When both of these panels are set to their max settings, they come very, very close to the output of a Sky Panel S60. However, with that comes some minor downsides, which you will find out today. Now I've been using this Nanlite Mix Panel 150 for about 10 months now, and the Godox has been on set with me for two months. I work on many different projects as a freelance cinematographer, as well as a gaffer right here in Los Angeles, and both of these panels have seen their fair share of various real world sets. From small indie narrative films, to music videos, to big corporate commercial setups. And since my company, Dog Times Productions, is an LLC, I absolutely love repping my brand on set. And thanks to Team Jerseys Pro, I now have this killer custom Dog Times baseball jersey. It's excellent quality. I was actually really surprised. It's really super soft. It reminds me of the throwback American Apparel t-shirts and the delivery was super quick. So I'll leave a link to their website down below. They offer lots of different styles of jerseys and, and features and fonts and all of that good stuff. And I'll even put a link down there for a special discount for all of my YouTube subscribers. Okay, enough of the shameless plug. The reason why I have both of them here is because I compared the max maximum output of each panel on different settings along with various modifiers. And then we compare the color renderings with my Siconic 800. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna tell you that the Godox panel has one huge advantage, and that's the fact that it has excellent app control. Every time I review a Godox light, I cannot stress how amazing that Godox light app is. I'm sure all of my subscribers are sick and tired of hearing about that Godox app by now, but one thing I can guarantee is that no one is sick of using it. It's that good. Now, if you are new here and never seen my ugly mug before, and you wanna see more of that Godox Lite app, I will put a link down in the description below to my review of the Godox SZ150R. That is a review where I spend a lot of time taking a deep dive into the Godox app and showing all the cool features that it offers. Side note, that SZ150R is twice the output of an Aperture 300X with full RGBW capabilities and even a weird little zooming cob LED. Link is down below. Now, the Nanlite Mix Panel 150 does not have app control unless you purchase the Nanlite router for an additional 150 bucks. However, there is still a way that you can remotely control the Nanlite mix panel, and that's with this little Nanlite RC remote, which you can actually pick up right now for only 13 bucks. Also, this little remote only controls the CCT and brightness. So it's not really the best option for the mix panel. However, it does come in clutch with the Forza 500. So be on the lookout for that review coming soon. When I test the output of any lighting fixture, I prefer to take the reading at a three meter distance, which is around 9.8 feet. To me, that is the most realistic distance for how far a light fixture may be towards your talent. Also, I test the output with my Siconic 800 because this is going to give me the true output of the light. It's just simply going to take the reading and give you the right amount of foot candles or lux at whatever distance you're at. So just keep that in mind. 
all my readings regarding output on any fixture is always gonna be from a three meter distance and taken with my Sekonic 800. Little side note, shameless plug here, I created a thing and offered it for all of my Dog Times Patreon members called the Gaffer's Cheat Sheet. That is a thing that I made for a lot of the gaffer jobs that I go on. Uh, sometimes I work with my lighting van equipment, sometimes I work with rental uh, trucks that have you know more industry standard packages. So it has a slew of all kinds of different lights so you can just instantly look at it and know what lights you need to pull out of the van and you don't look like a dummy bringing out a bunch of lights that just don't have the punch depending on how far away they need to be parked from your talent. Also in there, I include a quick reference sheet of each diffusion rag that's very standard and very popular in Hollywood and shows how much light loss you lose with each one of those diffusion rags. Okay, now that we have all the shameless plugs out of the way and all the logistics out of the way, let's dive into the numbers. When I set both of these panels to their maximum outputs, which for the Nanlite mix panel, that would be hard boost mode at 100%, it gave me 173 foot candles or 1,862 lux. As for the Godox with no diffuser and the fan on at 100%, I was getting 219 foot candles or 2,357 lux. Keep in mind folks, this is from a three meter distance. And when you're checking out lights online, very rarely do they show you the specs from a three meter distance. So right out the gate, the LD150R is the clear winner for maximum output. However, keep in mind that with both these lights set to full max, they're not giving you a very soft light. When the Nanlite is in hard mode like that, there is no diffuser applied. And the same with the Godox. I did take the diffusion panel off of here to get those numbers. Also, hard boost mode on the Nanlite is very, very loud, and we saw that seven months ago in its review. Now, talking about fans, the Godox isn't as loud as the Nanlite, however, it does occasionally put out a high-pitched squeal, but that may just be this specific unit. More on that in a minute because I don't want us to get ahead of ourselves, all right? We gotta get back to the numbers. Because when we compare these units to something like the industry standard RE Sky Panel S60, when you put its intensifier on at 100%, you will get 219 foot candles or 2,357 lux. That is identical to the Godox panel. But when we compare that to something like the Aperture Nova 300C, you will only get 94 foot candles or 1,012 lux. So that unit is significantly less than both of these units. And when you compare all the price tags, well, if you ask me for something like that Aperture 300 Nova, you're really just paying for the build quality, but sacrificing a crap ton of output. But let's pump the brakes and get more realistic here because I don't know about you guys, but when I'm rocking these units like that full blast, I'm usually pumping them through a big four x four diffusion frame. But if you know anything about diffusion rags, then you already know that depending on whatever rag you're using, you are going to have some significant light loss. I am notorious for using a 4x4 of Magic Cloth from Modern Studio Equipment, but that is a very heavy diffusion rag that cuts your light by two and a half stops. What I'm dancing around here is that when you are using these panels in a more realistic setting, using modifiers and diffusion rags, you are going to start losing output very rapidly. So in my opinion, it is better to start with something that has a boatload of output because I'm really not a fan of just blasting a light onto someone's face and walking away. But also that is determined by everyone's own personal aesthetic. And also you have to stay true to whatever project you happen to be working on. Me personally, I am a gigantic fan of big, broad, soft light. And the easiest way for me to do that is to take a panel like this and make it bigger and softer with some sort of diffusion. Now the mix panel does have that really handy built-in soft mode. You can just tap it with a click of a button and it goes soft. However, it's still a really tiny source. Now our Godox here does have way more real estate, which is handy, but it doesn't have one of those cool buttons that just makes it go instantly soft. But Godox does offer a lot of nice modifiers to help it out. The first one being this hard diffusion that just snaps right onto the front of the panel. However, when I do that, it knocks the output down to 98 foot candles 
which now is actually putting it on the same level as the Aperture Nova 300C. Again, something like this hard diffusion panel is still not ideal for me because essentially we still have a small source. But again, if we are just doing like a product shot, I mean, this could probably be really ideal, especially when we add in something like this honeycomb grid panel. Oh, come on, baby. Yeah, there we go. Now, unfortunately, this honeycomb grid panel is an outside purchase that will run you 69 bucks. And if you ask me, I think it is a bit of a bummer that Godox just doesn't include it in the kit. But also, you know, this panel is only a thousand bucks. And now that we know what it's capable of, I mean, beggars really can't be choosers here. Anyways, when I add this honeycomb grid panel on top of that hard diffusion panel, now we're dropping down to 72 foot candles. Again, I know I keep saying it, but Someone like me would only be using these two particular modifiers for something like product shots. Also, by the way, you don't need the barn doors to pop the honeycomb grid panel on here. I just have it slid in there just to make it more compact when it goes into the case because this thing does come in a really awesome case, which some of you may have seen if you follow me on Instagram at Kid Tech. Boy, this video is full of shameless plugs. But now let me show you what I've been using on a ton of corporate jobs lately in my gaffer world. So this right here is the Godox softbox that they make specifically for the LD150R. That thing also is only 69 bucks. And in my opinion, that is a much better investment than this honeycomb panel. And you have a couple different options with the softbox because you get a quarter light grid cloth and an eight crate grid. And I really appreciate it when softboxes and light domes come with an eight crate grid because it really helps control all the spill. Now with the softbox on and the quarter grid cloth at that three meter distance, you will get 80 foot candles. And then when you slap on the A crate, it's going to drop down to 50 foot candles. So even though with that softbox, you'll have a much larger and controlled source, but you're also losing a lot of output, essentially only using about a quarter of what this panel is actually capable of. But please keep in mind, that is nothing unique to this specific panel. It's just the way it goes with all lighting fixtures. I just wanted to mention these things because I think it's something that we should all be aware of and considering when we are purchasing lights. So now let me show you how I've really enjoyed using this Godox panel on a little short film that I was hired to be the DP on almost immediately after I received the panel. So on this particular project, I was using the LD150R as my main key source and simply just pumping it through various frames of diffusion and swapping out each diffusion rag just based upon the scene and whatever mood or vibe it called for. Now, this was an experimental short film where the entire thing takes place on a small stage. And when I say small, I'm talking tiny black box theater and I really had my work cut out for me. I, I, I feel like I tried my best at creating a most dynamic image that I possibly could while staying true to the script and also keep in mind that we need to make sure the audience is constantly aware that they are witnessing someone on a stage. It was a very unique and Brechtian style project. Anyways, if we take a look at the examples in this particular shot, it was the main character's apartment at nighttime. And for this setup, I was trying to go for a moody vibe. Now, if you saw my review of the Godox TL60 RGB tubes, you already know that I had those rigged above on a menace arm and were using them for room tone. Meanwhile, the Godox LD150R was my main key source sitting out in the audience area and pumping through various frames. So in this particular setup, I was going for a super soft look because it was interior night and moody. And so I was pumping it through an eight by eight of half soft frost. And then I was breaking it again through a four by four of quarter grid. And then to top that off, I slapped a four by four egg crate grid on the outside of that four by four frame. Now, half soft frost is going to cut your light by two stops. And that quarter grid is going to cut another half a stop. And then with that big egg crate grid, I lose another quarter of a stop. So that was a scene where I definitely had this Godox panel on full 100%, no hard diffusion panel on here, no honeycomb grid, just full blast naked shooting at the first frame of diffusion. And thank God we didn't experience that high pitched squeal that I mentioned earlier. I pinky promise we will get to that. But I should mention that during the filming of this setup, I got inspired by the scene and decided to turn on the TV special effect that this panel offers. It has a bunch of cool various special effects and it was very simple to do with that Godox light app. 
And with all that light loss of this panel pumping through both those big frames of diffusion, not to mention the big A-crate grid on the outside 4x4, looking at the proxies, I still feel like maybe the brightness is a tad too much, but I guess that's what grading is for. Now, before we move on, I have to show you one more example from that same project. So now our apartment has changed into a cantina, and now I'm blasting the panel through this awesome rainbow cloth, and holy cow, these things are rad. My gaffer, David Goodman of Goodman Grip and Light right here in LA, he has this in his van package, and I'm so happy that he had it in his van on this particular day, because I knew it would be perfect for that bar scene. And I've seen these before on Instagram, but never got to see them in real life before this. So these rags were created by a company called Broca Lighting Systems. And it is a really nice way of creating color patterns, glamorizing faces, and helping blend the light in your backgrounds. It's almost like having a glimmer glass for your light. I just knew it would be something perfect for this cantina scene where I was already going super stylized with the lighting and the filtration choices. So I guess the whole point of showing these real world examples is just to show all of you how important output is when you are using these panels in a more dramatic or dynamic fashion. I know most people would just love to set up a panel and walk away, but honestly, in my experience, that's something that I really only do in the corporate world or if I'm just straight up battling the sun. So if you are looking for a more nuanced image, you are really going to have to start getting creative with your modifiers and rags. And when you do that, you are going to start losing a significant amount of output. And that little short film to me was a true testament to how powerful and versatile this Godox panel really is. To the point where my gaffer David was so impressed that he turned around and rented this thing from me the following week. And he has 20 plus years experience in this show business. So there you go. Okay, finally, let's get to my favorite part, the color rendering test. So now when I did the CRI test, I did it live while recording myself. So we're gonna be discovering this information together. So let's flip over to that now. 5,700 Kelvin. So it is dang spot on, 5,600 there. It, it is showing to add a little bit of green. So it, it, it may be leaning on the magenta side a little bit. 92 is the overall CRI reading. Wow, look at that red channel. 65, 64.9, that red channel is insanely low. That is not good. Honestly, these, these, these are pretty weak. This is a pretty weak uh, reading for something, you know, you're talking about a fixture, you know, even though I know this is a low budget fixture, this is what I've noticed with the, with the first generation of the Pavo tubes as well. I'm talking about the 15 C's and the 30 C's, very weak uh, uh, CRI ratings. They're all over the place. And this panel is no different. This is a bummer because the I just recently purchased the Forza 500 and that thing is immaculate. Now, maybe what I should do once, I, I should do the review of that really quick and then we can look at the readings and then work with it for 10 months and then go back and revisit. Actually, what I'm gonna do, oh, I wish I would have owned this when I originally did the review on this because we could have seen, because you know, this has been burning on sets for 10 months now that I've been using this mix panel 150. So odds are maybe, I don't know, but 10 months, not even a whole year and it would be that crappy. I mean, that's bad folks. Okay, so it is what it is there. Let's go in here and we can look at the TM30 chart and we can see. So again, that, that 15 channel, is a little nuts. So now that we have that, we can look at the spectrum of it as well. That's that on the spectrum. All right, so there we have it. So not impressive, actually. That's a bit of a bummer, actually. That's the first time I've ever used this on this light, actually, to like just see what the true reading of it is when it's set to 5,600 Kelvin. So if you don't wanna mess with the app, there's really cool like on-screen controls. I love the little menu, it's colored. It's, it's a much more, I don't know, fun menu versus the nan light i guess you could say so we're going to go into cct we're at 5600 kelvin and i am going to see that so you'll notice the fan is on as soon as i drop below 75 percent the high pitch squeal turns off we'll talk about this very very soon but for now we need it on 100 so i can take the reading I'm gonna turn it back down because it is quite loud. Okay, and the reading on that was 5590. So it is much closer accurate than the Nanlite was. That's pretty impressive. You can pop out and look at the CRI chart on that bad boy, 96. Much cleaner colors. Let's see which ones are hurting. 
Ooh, the R12 channel is really down. 74.5 on that R12 channel. That's the only bad one. That's the one that's ultimately pulling this light down. Isn't that interesting? Look how well the R9 channel is excelling. It is, is, and then meanwhile, it's just interesting how different uh, manufacturing uh, just have, they struggle in different areas. But overall, this is a much better color of a light. Let's look at the spectrum, the overall spectrum of the Godox. And there's the TM30 chart for the uh, for the Godox, okay? Now when the fan's off, it doesn't let you go any higher than 50%. So in that aspect, it reminds me of the SZ150R unit. If you guys have not seen the review of that, uh, I have already mentioned that there's a link down below. The one thing I wanna point out that I just realized is that when you do turn that fan off and it drops down to 50%, it gets really green. So you'll see here it's telling me to add 1.7 magenta to uh, adjust for the green shift. So turning the fan off, it drops down to 50%. You're gonna get green in there. What's cool about the light, you can go in there and instantly adjust you know, your, your green magenta. Okay, so now let's get into the cons, the negatives, the downsides. The first one I already mentioned, and it's that high-pitched squeal. Now I am 98% positive that the problem is this particular unit, this specific unit, uh, because I have talked to members of my Dog Times Patreon that also own this same light and they have not encountered this squeal issue. And the funny thing is the panel actually arrived like this. I just didn't realize it at first. And it's funny, I can prove this because I had my wife film the unboxing for me on her cell phone for my IGTV. Look, just real quick, just for a little pre-look here. English. Yes, we will take English for 5,000, Alex. Okay, cool, now. So you all heard that, right? I mean, you can definitely hear it as soon as I turn it on, right? Look, just real quick, just for a little pre-look here. English. Yes, we will take English for 5,000, Alex. In the moment, I didn't, it didn't register to me what was going on, you know, because I'm doing the unboxing, I'm trying to talk and all of that. But then after I, after the noise got worse and worse, the more I used this panel, because it does, it got it got worse and worse over time, because we didn't hear it on the little short film that we just saw examples of either. So I, then I started digging back, and I went back and watched that unboxing video, and I was like, dang, it was happening. It just wasn't as loud as it is now, but it was there. I was like, dang, that, that did happen. So then I reached out to Godox, and I emailed them this video. Now, Godox's response is that they thought it had something to do with the current. And I guess that means the outlet that I have it plugged in, but I find that very odd because it has happened multiple times in various different locations all throughout Los Angeles. And as I said, it is getting worse the more I use it. So that is a bit of a bummer because, you know, now it is pretty much only usable on a project where I know there is no audio that's going to be recorded. So for that reason, unfortunately for me, now this particular unit is really only something I can bring on to music videos or maybe something where I know that, you know, we don't need it full blast and keep it under 75%, I guess. Uh, or, or maybe if you do have to pump it up, like put it in the other room. You know, I, I mean, the upside to all of this is that we do know that this unit is very powerful. It's just kind of putting out a whistle. Again, probably something just with this particular unit. Something obviously happened to the fan on this particular unit. You know, but you guys, if you're familiar with this channel, you know me, you know I don't hold anything back. I mean, that's what, uh, you know, I'm here for the underdogs. That's what Dog Times is all about, right? So, you know, as a reviewer, I'm putting a bit of a pickle here because I feel like, you know, if someone is to buy this light, this could potentially happen to you. 
But also at the same time, you know, I also have to admit this could be a one-off. This could be a freak accident, something that just happened to this particular unit when it was being shipped over. Or, you know, I am a reviewer. They shipped this to me two months ago. It was one of the first units off of the, you know, the, the conveyor belt. So perhaps it was just, you know, the first batch or can it be something fixed in firmware? I don't know. Quality control is something that just seems to be plaguing tech companies, right? And, and, and whatever happens during shipping is completely out of both the suppliers and the consumers control. But as I've said in past videos, nothing can change the experiences that we've all already had. See how we come full circle like that? So I don't know, I still love Godox, but honestly, this does put me in a weird position, man. However, I do wanna say that if you are spending money on this unit, I am pretty damn confident that Godox would just simply swap it out for you because in my experience, they do have excellent customer service. Okay, so it's not over though. There are a couple more kind of bummers that we need to address, okay? And this is something that my gaffer David Goodman pointed out. So the way they designed this power plug on the back of the panel, in David's opinion, is not gonna last long. So what you'll notice here is that this little plug, the power plug, is, you know, it, it's designed to be plugged in this very weird slanted fashion. It doesn't go straight in, doesn't go sideways, doesn't go from the top. It's from the bottom at this slant. And then the worst part is they have this huge power brick attached to it. So this design, once it's brought to your attention, I think we can all agree it's pretty no bueno. Now, Godox does include their little V-mount clamps for light stands. They include these with all of their lights, even the tubes, actually. So this uh, creates like a little diaper for the power brick, right? So this thing will just sit down in here like that, right? It just sits in there. And then the V-mount clamp uh, wraps around the light stand. So see, something like this, right? Um, now, obviously, I would put it on the thick part of the stand, and also, I don't use these little shitty stands that I have here in the YouTube studio. Uh, when I'm on set, I use Matthew's beefy triple riser stands, uh, which are very, very thick. But then, I think you can quickly see the problem with this, too, is like, every time you have to, you know, stick up or down on your light, you gotta be moving this thing up and down, you know, depending on if you have to change the tier on it, or, you know, I mean, it gets a little crazy really quick. It's just something to be aware of, you know? It's kind of a poor design choice. And if you ask me, it's not the first time we've seen weird choices being made with power plugs when it comes to Godox. You see, even just doing this, it's like, it's a pain in the ass having that thing, you know, hanging on the light stand like that. Now, one way to get around this whole weird power cord issue is just, yeah, let's just run it off V-mount. Well, the downside to that is much like our Nanlite Mix Panel 150, the Godox LD150R also only uses 26 volt V mounts. And that's a bit of an issue because the 26 volt V mounts are not nearly as readily available as the 14 volt V mounts. And also they're really uh, quite a bit more expensive. So even though this Godox LD150R does have a whole lot of output, it also has some pretty big drawbacks. And something I'm coming to realize on this filmmaking journey of mine is that when it comes to film lights, it seems like what you're really paying for is that build quality, the longevity of your investment. So lights are no different from anything else in this very expensive career of ours. Or hobby. Lord help you if this is your hobby. But what do I know? Maybe you're filthy rich, which I hope you are. But at the end of the day, if you needed a light that is super comparable to the RE Sky Panel and has full RGBW capabilities, full control of green magenta shift, I mean, just wonderful app control, a ton of features, and you don't really care about the lifespan of the unit, then the Godox LD150R is your best choice. And you know, if you do want one that can be powered off of 14 volt V mounts, Godox actually does make this in a couple other different sizes. However, the LD150R is the largest. So just keep in mind, if you choose one of the other ones, you are gonna lose a little bit of output. Anyways, I'll have plenty of links down below for all of you to do all the fun research for yourselves. I wanna give a very special shout out to Fred Parr and Mike Skinner for supporting this channel from the producers tier over on the Dog Times Patreon. And also thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. And what's that you say? You've never heard of the Dog Times Patreon? 
It is definitely the number one way to support the show. I mean, I take everyone there on a virtual behind the scenes journey. I'm, I'm talking from the very beginning, from the ground up. You know, we, we start with the job pitch, sometimes the location scout, all of the previs, the pre-production. Then we go on the job. You know, I take you with me, you know, you know, via, you know, a camera, obviously, but you know, we go on set and you're there for the whole journey. And literally every day I spend on set, we break down on the Patreon. It's, it's a cool interactive way to support the channel and what I do here. Okay, folks, as the one more plane is flying overhead, that's what it sounds like when you live in Los Angeles. It doesn't, no matter where you live, there will always be planes flying over your head. As always, thank you for watching. And for now, that is a big fat wrap. While the plane's going over, I'm gonna tell a joke here. Kind of a joke. Someone, man, I get the funniest comments on YouTube. Someone wrote on the YouTube, man, this is this video is a walking ad. You know what was the one? Is the one where on the thumbnail it says, real uh, Komodo rig build for real filmmakers or some bullshit like that? And they were like, man, this video is a walking ad. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, dude, do you know how many big time YouTubers I watch and they have like full on segments about, yeah, talk about story blocks, art grid. <laughs>